have a simple view template which displays a list of products. Now when Rails renders this template, it's going to parse it through a template handler, and the one it goes through is determined by the file extension, in this case ERB. Now another template handler provided by Rails is Builder, which is used to generate XML. This is especially useful for creating RSS or Atom feeds like I show here, and I explain this more in episode 87. There are many other template handlers available through external gems, such as Haml or Rabble, but in this episode I want to focus on creating our own template handler. But first, let me address a common point of confusion, uh, which is the double extension and view file names. It's important to understand that the first extension is the format of the uh, response, and the second extension is the template handler, which will be used to parse that file. So in this case, we can uh, return HTML and parse it through ERB but we could use a variety of template handlers such as Haml or Builder to generate the HTML response. All right, I'm going to start by making a new template file which will demonstrate the template handler I want to create. And that is I'll make a new index uh, JSON uh, response here. And I'm going to use the template handler RB extension because this will be a very simple one which just uses Ruby. So the idea here is that the response will be whatever string is returned at the end of this Ruby file. So let's try this out. Here's the application with the product listing in HTML, but let's make a request for the JSON format. And we get a template missing exception because it's not able to find a template with a handler that it understands. I can resolve this by making a new template handler for the RB extension. I'm going to do so instead of the config initializers directory, but in the long run, you might want to extract this out into a gem. So I'll make a new file here called uh, Ruby uh, template handler .rb. Now a handler is simply an object which responds to calls. So we could just make it a Lambda if we wanted to. And by the way, this is the new uh, Ruby 1.9 syntax. So this accepts a template object as an argument, and then it expects me to return a string with Ruby code inside of it as a response. So I'll just put some Ruby code in here to uh, try this out. And it might seem a little strange to put Ruby code inside of a string, but I believe it does this for performance reasons. Now I still need to register this template handler, which I can do by calling action view template and then register template handler, and then passing in the file extension I want to use for the view template, which will be RB, and then passing in that handler object, which responds to call. All right, and that's it. Make sure to restart the application for the initializer to take effect. Now when I reload the page with the JSON uh, request, it's going to uh, return the date in response. Now I obviously don't want to respond with today's date every time, instead I want to use the Ruby code presented in the template. To do this is quite easy because this template object, which is an instance of action view template, responds to a method source, which we can use, and that will return a string containing the content of that file. Now after a quick restart, reloading this page gives us the response hello world, which was contained inside that JSON template. By the way, there is a cleaner way to write this handler, and that is just to use the symbol uh, source and then pass into proc on it, which will end up uh, calling source on the object passed into the proc. All right, now that we have a working Ruby template, let's put it to good use by generating some JSON. I'll uh, paste in some code for this. Here I'm just looping through each of the products and mapping them to an array of hashes and then calling to JSON on it to convert it to a string. So the advantage of doing this here instead of uh, just calling to JSON directly on the products is that we can use helper methods or generate URLs, which can be quite handy. And now reloading the page, there is that JSON response complete with the working URLs. Now I really like this approach because it feels much simpler than using a Rabble or JBuilder, and I can never remember their interface anyway. But what about more complex scenarios such as embedding associations into the JSON response? Well, that is quite simple to do as well. Imagine with me for a minute that uh, products have many reviews. So well, let's say we want to embed the reviews here as well. I'll just fetch all the uh, products reviews and then loop through them. And for each of the reviews, we can just uh, return another hash of the review content we want to display. Alternatively though, what if we want to remove some duplication with the reviews JSON response and move this off into a partial? In that case, we can just call a render and then pass in that review object. So what this will do is look for a partial under reviews slash review dot JSON, and then we can use that same RB uh, template handler, and that will return a JSON string in response. But because it's a string, we'll need to parse the JSON here. So you'll need to run it through json.parse because 
Otherwise, it would include a JSON string in the response. So there is that additional step if you're moving JSON into a partial, but this entire solution still feels quite clean to me. Now a Ruby template is useful for more than just JSON. A CSV export is another great candidate, so if you're needing to generate some CSV, uh, we can just make this a csv.rb extension. And I'll just paste in the code for this, which is using the standard CSV library, and I'm just adding a header and then inserting a row for each of the products. Now the advantage of going with this approach over what I show in episode 362 is we can use uh, helper methods for generating URLs and so on, which wouldn't be possible if we're generating the CSV content inside of the model. Now in order for this to work, I need to include the CSV lib, which I'll do inside of the config application.rb file. I'll just require it here at the top. Now we can try this out by visiting products.csv, and yay, there's the output. But what if we want this file to be downloaded instead of displayed inline through the browser? Well, inside of the Ruby template, we have access to the response object, which we can do something like this, where we change the headers for the content disposition and set it to attachment with this given file name. And now when I visit that URL again, it's going to download it as a file. Now a Ruby template can even be used to generate HTML. I'll demonstrate this in the show ERB template. And I would only really consider this if I have a lot of ERB tags and those greatly outweigh the HTML tags. So I'm going to rename this show template with just a .rb extension, and then I'll paste in the equivalent code in Ruby. So here I'm using helper methods like div4 and content tag to generate the HTML. In general, I probably wouldn't do this, but it's just sort of a neat example of what all is possible with a Ruby template. Next, I want to shift gears and show you how to make another template handler for parsing Markdown. This can be especially helpful for informational type pages, such as this About Us page, which is primarily paragraph tags. So the way I want this to work is use an extension such as MD for the template, and then I can uh, paste in the Markdown version, which is quite a bit cleaner and really more focused on the content instead of the HTML structure. This certainly wouldn't work well in every situation, but some cases like this, it can be quite nice. So to get this to work, I need to make a new initializer, which I'll do here and just call it a markdown uh, template handler dot RB. So this time I'm going to make a full on class with that name and give it a class method that responds to call and takes that template as an argument. So I need to do the processing here and converting it uh, through markdown. And then I need to uh, use action view template.register template handler, and this time I'll use the markdown extension and then pass in that uh, markdown class. Now you might want to do this multiple times if you want to support different extensions for markdown. All right, so now we need to convert our template source through markdown, and to do that I'm going to use red carpet. So I'm first going to just add this to the gem file of this application. And at the bottom here, I'll add the red carpet gem, and then you'll need to run the bundle command to install that. And then back in the HTML template, I'm just going to paste in the code for this so you don't have to watch me type it all. Uh, basically, I'm just making a new HTML renderer and passing in a few different options, and then making a new uh, markdown parser and rendering that uh, template source code, which will end up rendering the code inside of the markdown template file. So you might want to pass in different options here depending on how you want Markdown to behave. Now let's try this out. I restarted the Rails application and when I click on the About Us page, I get this exception. And it looks like it's trying to parse our HTML source as Ruby code, which is filled with all kinds of problems. So this is a common gotcha when working with template handlers. Uh, here I'm just returning the HTML source as a string, but remember this is expecting the Ruby code inside of a string, so it's going to try to evaluate it as Ruby code. A quick fix for this is to call inspect on a string, and that way it will quote the string so it will be considered a Ruby code. After another restart, when I reload this page, hey, it works. So here the markdown was converted to HTML properly, and if I view the source, we can see the HTML source that was generated matches what we had in the template before. Now it would be nice if we could add dynamic content to our markdown template using ERB. For example, what if I want to display a link to our products listing? Then I could just use ERB here to go to the products path instead of having a hard-coded URL. You would think one option would be to add the .erb extension to this file name like you can with uh, asset pipeline templates, but unfortunately, this is not possible with Rails views. 
To get this to work, I'll need to code this functionality into our Markdown template handler. Now you might want to consider making a separate extension and handler for this, but I'll just code this right into the same handler. Uh, the first thing I'll want to do is run this template through the ERB template handler. So I'm going to first fetch that is through action view template, and then I can call registered template handler, and then pass in the ERB extension to grab that. Next, I'll run the call method on that template handler and pass in the same template object, and this returns Ruby source code inside of a string. From here, things get a little trickier. We can no longer pass that source code directly into Red Carpet because it's now Ruby code, and that will need to be reevaluated upon each request. However, this call method isn't triggered on each request, it is cached for performance reasons. To solve this problem, we're going to need to move all this red carpet functionality into a string. So I'll use a here doc for that. I'll just call it source and then end it down here at the bottom. And then we're going to need to pass the Ruby source code into this render call. And to do that, I'm going to wrap it in begin and end blocks. And then I'll just uh, put this right into here. And then I'm going to also remove the inspect call at the end since we're now returning Ruby code in a string. All right, let's give this a try. Reloading the page now shows that product listing link and clicking on it takes us to that path. It works. Well, we now have a working Markdown template handler which supports ERB. Things get a little bit messy when you're having to put a lot of Ruby code in strings like this, but that's just the side effect of how a Rails template handlers work. Thankfully, once you get it working, you won't have to adjust it too much. Just add a template with the proper extension and away you go. On a related note, you might want to check out the gem Mark ERB by Jose Valim. He goes one step further and uses this to generate multi-part emails through a single uh, Markdown and ERB template. He describes this process in more detail in his book, Crafting Rails Applications. Another gem worth checking out is Tilt. Uh, this provides a standardized interface for working with a variety of template engines, as you can see here. Now, I won't be going into Tilt in detail in this episode, perhaps at a future time. Unfortunately, it isn't used in Rails for generating templates. However, it is, is used in the asset pipeline. Well, that's all I have for this episode. I hope it gave you some ideas on how you can create uh, custom template handlers to really get the most out of your Rails views and make them more efficient.